This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good night, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for December 6, 2022. And in the news tonight, JFJ disappointed with a declaration of new SOEs. Human rights group Jamaicans for Justice has expressed disappointment with the government's decision to declare another round of states of public emergency. The emergency measure covers St. and Clarendon, St. Catherine, sections of Kingston and St. Andrew, and the western parishes of St. James, Hanover and Westmoreland. JFJ Executive Director Michael Jackson said the group maintains its position that the imposition of SOEs is not effective in tackling the country's rising crime rate. She added that while the SOE might reduce the instances of crime in the parish in which it is imposed, it causes migration of criminals to adjoining areas where the security measure is not in effect. Jamaican for Justice, we note with disappointment that the government has opted to reimpose the state of public emergency and add another parish. And I, I think it supports the concern that we have that when you have the SOEs in place, what you have is migration to other areas. And unfortunately, there is nothing that suggests that the state of public emergency is working. Now, if you look at the state of public emergency, yes, the crime rate will drop in a particular parish, but what you see happening is the migration to other neighboring areas, what we call the hopscotch approach. You find that it drops in Trelawney, for example, but the crime rate in St. Anne would then increase. So we do question the efficacy of the SOE in that regard. A businessman in St. Anne has said he is perturbed by the declaration of state of emergency in the parish. Alric Denton, who operates a shop in Brownstone, said crime in St. Anne is not at the level that warrants the emergency measure. After two years of locking down in the country and that pandemic, we are going to a Christmas season when we are trying to recuperate. Nothing not going on. We try to recuperate and we are under state of emergency. I don't understand the logic behind that. And somebody will have to explain. Maybe, the, well, I don't know who know what, what we don't know. But there must be something going on. Because I was in our profile meeting last night with the police them. And we iron out certain things, how to deal with crime management and things like that, traffic management, into the town. You understand what I'm saying? And that pass on to what you are sentence be because we have the IASAP and all of them into the meeting. So I understand, we understand how to take ourselves, how to try to protect ourselves around here. So I don't understand it. Murders up to 1,417. With a little more than three weeks before the end of the year, Jamaica has recorded 1,417 murders up to December 4. This is compared to 1,368 homicides recorded over the similar period last year, representing a 3.6% increase. The St. James Police Division has recorded the highest number of murders with 191, followed by Westmoreland with 136, St. Catherine North at 135, and St. Andrew South with 125. Eleven of the 19 police divisions have seen an increase in murders. The police have recorded nearly 1,100 reported cases of shootings. Some 1,014 people have been injured in violence so far this year, compared to 1,085 over the corresponding period last year. Police statistics also show a 19% increase in robberies and the 8% increase in break-ins. Police in Guys Hill clamp down on unruly motorcyclists. The Guys Hill Police in St. Catherine today clamped down on unruly motorcyclists. Sergeant Kenneth McTavish says that several bikes were seized for breaches of the Road Traffic Act. At least seven were seized for excessive noise. McTavish says the other bikes were seized because they were unlicensed as well as because operators did not have a motorcyclist rider's license. We will continue to make the streets safe by continuing to regulate the motorcyclists to have them operate within the law, McTavish said. Several residents commended the police's operation. Sometimes them frighten you with the loud noise, so we are pleased with the police, Jonathan Melbourne said. It was revealed by the police that last month, 
Three motorcyclists were fined over $50,000 for various breaches. Regional authorities are told to audit bathrooms at public health facilities. Regional health authorities have been instructed to carry out an audit of all public bathrooms at hospitals, clinics, and health centers. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says he wrote to administrators on Monday in light of the expose on the state of public bathrooms at some health facilities. Dr. Tufton says he accepts that the management has a responsibility to ensure the upkeep of the sanitary conveniences and will follow up to correct whatever shortcomings there are. We have over 500 such facilities in our public health, in the hospitals alone, not the health centers, and we will follow up on that to correct that. In keeping with that right to a clean sanitary convenience is a responsibility to take care of it because I am not going to devalue the conversation around abuse of our sanitary conveniences and our health infrastructure. You can't put the toilet paper fast enough in the bathroom for somebody to put it in their bag and walk out with it. Or to literally tear the, the, the soap dispenser off the wall. Not only just empty it, take out the full dispenser and go out with it. We have to understand that this partnership requires us to protect the assets that are there to care for us. Some security guards are back on the job at Princess Margaret Hospital. There has been an improvement in the number of security guards turning up for duties at Princess Margaret Hospital in St. Thomas. Melissa Linton, the chief executive officer at the hospital, says that the administration continues discussions with Atlas Security, which employs the guards. The security guards, some of whom have been off the job since Saturday, are upset about the non-payment of wages. This left a limited number of guards to cover critical areas at the hospital. Prime Minister defends the imposition of another round of SOEs. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has defended the re-imposition of states of public emergency in areas where the measure recently expired. The Prime Minister this morning announced a state of emergency in Clarendon, St. Catherine, St. James, West, Marland, Hanover, and the sections of Kingston and St. Andrew all the areas in which SOEs had been imposed for two weeks in November. The St. Andrew Central Police Division, as well as the parish of St. Anne, have been added to the new SOEs. At a press conference on Tuesday morning, Mr. Holness said that the measure is needed to clamp down on criminals who have increased their activities since the expiration of the first round of SOEs and have threatened the property and the public disorder. Since the end of the last state of emergency, we have seen, unfortunately, an increase in criminal activities in these areas and indeed a threat to property and in some instances public disorder. The court took issue with the emergency powers regulations under which Mr. Clark had been detained. Those regulations were made in 2018. The emergency powers regulations that will be in effect for this new declaration of the SOEs are different from the regulations that the court took issue with. We have taken a lot of care and diligence to go through the various issues raised by the court and have made changes to address them. Will we need the SOEs? Yes, there will always be SOEs. Is it something that we want to do forever and ever and ever? Absolutely not. But I think in the modern world, our constitution needs to be upgraded so that those powers can be easily and effectively used when the circumstances require them. Emergency powers have always been an executive tool because it is the executive that has to respond and react. We need to upgrade and recraft how the emergency powers are used in our constitution to deal with the modern threats that exist. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.